Yo what is going on guys, Flashverse here and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 8 and this will be my full season review for The Flash Season 8 as a whole so we'll be talking about everything from what I liked and disliked throughout the whole season so yeah hopefully you guys enjoy this review but before I go over anything however you guys don't forget to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel so you are aware of more Arrowverse content coming your way. Okay so I would like to start off by saying this season is hands down one of the best seasons of the show. I would place it third best in terms of my ranking of the seasons of this show. What a massive step up this season is compared to that awful and unwatchable season 7. The Flash season 8 is what I would call the show's Arrow season 5. It is the season that saved the show and I would go as far to say that this season is definitely the one that redeemed the show. Now what I mean by saying that is that the Flash season 8 needed to be good. It needed to be really really good. I don't think the Flash could have taken another bad season especially due to how awful season 7 was and of course we've had a couple of bad seasons previously as well like season 5 was terrible, season 4 had its ups and downs, season 6 although the Bloodwork arc was great the Mirror Monarch arc had its ups and downs so season 8 really needed to deliver and I am very very proud to say that it delivered and not only did it deliver it exceeded my expectations it is the season that saved the show and I am so 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 happy with what we ended up with despite me still having a little bit of issues with the season and of course I will get to that during this review. But I'm going to say that The Fly Season 8 genuinely felt like seasons 1 and 2. It had all the elements from those seasons from tone to mystery to the build up and getting those insane WTF reveals. This season had it all and it was without a doubt something I really really enjoyed. Another highlight is I really loved how every character had some involvement in episodes in their own individual way. It was something I really really appreciated and it was a fair balance with the episodes. Like we had a lot of times where Barry shined, we had a lot of times where Iris shined and I, I would say it really worked. I really liked how the episodes were made in terms of, as I said, giving every character something to do and that was something I really liked. Now of course going into like the main thing which really made me so happy about this season is our main character Barry Allen aka The Flash. He is the best he's ever been. He's super leveled up and I cannot believe I'm saying this but he actually does not feel like a side character, not only that but he is much more confident than he's ever been before. He actually knows what he's doing when he goes out there. He doesn't have to go and ask everyone for help every single time. He actually knows what he's doing. He's much more confident, actually feels like a team leader where he's the one who's giving out the plans, telling people what to do. Um, it just makes me so happy because this is something that we should have gotten way back in season 4 and now here we are at season 8 and we're finally getting it and it just makes me so happy. I really loved how Barry uses a variety of his abilities as well which is something which doesn't really stand out in previous seasons however in this one he uses a lot of his abilities. We really get to get a feel in terms of how much more powerful this man has become, how much more confident he's become. And as I said, seeing him use all of these different abilities was so, so cool. One thing that also stood out in terms of his abilities is when he learns a new ability, we do see him use it more in the season. Like we had him using that like lightning explosion, which he performed in episode two, where he like charged up in lightning and literally exploded. And we got to see that several times throughout the season. We got to see it when he destroyed Caitlyn's lab. And also we got to see it when he beat Negative Dion in the lab of Mina Dawan as well. So that was something I really liked. But Barry has been like this very, very consistently throughout the Flash Season 8. And I could not be any prouder with what they did with his character this season. Because he has been great. 
On top of that, also Grant Gustin's acting always shines. Um, it just makes me really, really proud and I really, really loved it. Another thing which really stood out for Barry, and once again, you could put this in the abilities category as well, is that he did not have to get tossed around by enemies every single time. Like, if we have a look at season 7, he got beat by enemies he should have defeated in less than a second. And this was something we actually got to see in the Flash season 8, and one scene which really stands out was when he went against the Royal Flush Gang, where he was able to like use speed thinking to confuse everyone. He used flash time to actually like freeze time and defeat his enemies. It was really cool to watch and it really stood out, as I said, compared to previous seasons where he just had to continuously keep getting knocked out despite him being able to defeat those villains in less than a second realistically. And this was something which happened in the Flash Season 8 where he was actually able to fully defeat villains first try rather than ending up having a round 2 with the help of Team Flash. But yeah, let's get into my review for The Flash's 5th graphic novel, Armageddon. Now this graphic novel I would say is my favourite graphic novel of all of the ones we've had. And this is for many many reasons which I'm going to mention, but the one thing that really stood out other than Barry is the tone. I would say Armageddon had the perfect tone and like just feel of The Flash. It felt like I was watching seasons one and two and that is because everything from tone to mystery, it had it all. We had great reveals over here, especially with like Joe's death, Barry losing his mind, all of that. It was all so well handled. We of course had this great build up because something's wrong. Despero reveals that Barry is supposed to be causing Armageddon and destroying the world and slowly we see Barry losing his mind and we're wondering what's going on. We get this insane reveal that Joe is somehow dead and then in episode 3 we of course go investigate what's going on and then we get this insane reveal later on where we find out that Eobarthon aka the reverse flash was behind it. It was such an insane reveal. And of course, we had that reverse flash point where we, of course, had Barry becoming the reverse flash and Ia Barton becoming the flash. It was something I really, really loved seeing. And as I said, it had the perfect tone. It was mostly serious at times, which was something I really liked. It wasn't, it wasn't quirky. It wasn't cringy like season seven. This tone was perfect. The mystery was perfect and the reveals just it gave one of the craziest moments of the show and it was something which really really made me happy once again Barry has been the best he's been over here we get the feel of how leveled up he is of course we get that train sequence in episode one we then get him facing off the royal flush gang highlighting more of his like confidence and just how much more powerful he's become and then we end up getting him facing off against Zotar once again, just showing us how much more powerful he's been. And it was just something I really, really loved. And it definitely was a highlight from this graphic novel as well. We had the best villain in terms of the graphic novels, and this is counting Bloodwork and Mirror Monarch as well. Despero, I would say, is the third best villain we've had on the show. Tony Curran played this character so well. His CGI was actually really good. He was a very threatening villain when he needed to be. His characterization was actually really interesting as well, where of course, we get a taster of what Despero is like, where in episode two, it makes him look like a good guy where he wants to kill the Flash so that Armageddon doesn't happen, so that his world essentially doesn't get destroyed because he mentions that on his planet, there was some prisoner who he let escape and then that ended up destroying his hometown and he did not want that to happen. But then in reality, and this was a reveal we got in episode 5 where we found out that Despero actually enjoys killing so that was something that was a really cool twist. But yeah, Despero was really threatening and he did actually put up a challenge against the Flash which was something I really really liked. He had this really cool final battle as well and us of course seeing a variety of Despero's abilities. We got to see how powerful this guy is, of course, highlighting the threat to Barry. So that was something I really, really liked. 
One thing that really stood out in Armageddon was of course Iris and what happened with her in CCC Media. I really loved seeing Iris as not only this big boss when she needed to be, but also she got to do some really cool reporting which was something I really enjoyed. Like one thing that really stood out was that podcast slash interview she had with Kristen Kramer and of course her investigating what happened with Joe and also as I said seeing her boss side where she like tells people what to do she told Allegra what to do she gave her this like promotion and tested her skills and it was something I really liked and of course we did get some hints of her time sickness here and there but nothing too much which of course gets much much more intense as we head into the other upcoming episodes it was also great seeing all these other characters come back and cross over with the flash it genuinely felt like this really cool crossover and it was something i really enjoyed of course in episode one we had ray and i really loved the dynamic barry and ray shared in episode two we of course got to see alex as like some zoom meeting and then we of course got to see black lightning towards the end of the episode and episode three was something i really enjoyed where we got to see these mentions of like what the Arrowverse Justice League did. They talked about the Injustice Protocol they created. They talked about Felix Faust. I really loved Black Lightning's involvement in episode three as well, where he was trying to like mentor Barry and like teach Barry the ways and like essentially telling Barry not to quit because we had that moment where of course we had Jefferson and Barry fighting because Barry wanted to get rid of his speed because of him fearing that he's going to create Armageddon because he's genuinely lost his mind at this point and Black Lightning's trying to get through to him. We of course got that conflict and we had that great scene between Barry and Black Lightning where of course Black Lightning mentions Oliver Queen and like would this have been something that he would be happy about when he sees Barry? Like he says Oliver Queen was no quitter so don't you dare quit on yourself. We also got the where's the future? It's right here. And all of that just really, really stood out. And seeing Black Lightning, especially after this cool mini interaction they shared in Crisis on Infinite Earths, and just seeing more of that interaction between them and that dynamic, it was something I really, really loved. Of course, in episode four, we got to see Alex and Ryan Choi in this reverse flashpoint world. And they did not have like the best of scenes, especially because of like this thing they pushed with love which wasn't something I was a fan of they felt very underused which again wasn't something I really enjoyed we of course had Batwoman in this episode as well and she had this great scene with Iris towards like middle of the episode which was something I did enjoy but the one I enjoyed the most in terms of the cameos for this episode was of course Damien Dark we had Barry being Eobard Thawne over here and then of course he goes to Damien Dark for help and Barry acts like he's the villain and him getting these interactions with Damien Dark and trying to like convince him and all it was something I really really enjoyed and just seeing Barry and Damien Dark teaming up together especially after Barry got through to him when he told Damien that Nora Dark is alive in the original timeline I thought all of that was really really well handled and of course for episode 5 We had Mia Queen making an appearance and that was something which was really cool to see as well. Now one thing which felt a bit weird with what they did with Mia is that they didn't really tie up any loose ends with Green Arrow and the Canaries. They just made her appear and we find out that she's still looking for William. And of course during that episode we did have Iris helping her out and she does actually get a lead. So we had kind of a progression with that storyline. However, it doesn't like tie up any loose ends whatsoever it's still like out there in the open whether they will do something with that later on I don't know but for now at least it is like this but seeing Mia was really cool having her fight the reverse flash towards the start of the episode was something I really enjoyed and of course having her interactions with like other characters like Chester and Iris it was really really nice as well and just having all of these cameos just really made it feel like a genuine Arrowverse crossover and this was something I, this is something I really appreciate about Eric Wallace he really made this really really great graphic novel as somewhat of a crossover 
And it really just reinforces its connectivity with the Arrowverse because we had characters like Ray Palmer, who's from Legends. We had Batwoman appearing. We, of course, had Green Arrow appearing and Black Lightning. So it really helped to just reinforce this idea of the Arrowverse. And it's like contained within the Flash and just everything like that. It really made me happy about it. And then of course, we had this really sick final battle between Despero and the Flash. We, of course, had Barry getting his gold boots. All of that was just so, so well handled. And of course, we had Eobard Thon getting his power stripped away because he was getting erased from existence. All of that just worked so well. And Armageddon has genuinely been a blast. But moving on to the next graphic novel, we have the Deathstorm arc, aka Death Revisited. Now, of course, over here, we get introduced to the Black Flame, who's essentially like a metahuman serial killer. It's a Black Flame, but it goes around killing people. And it had this very interesting and unique buildup because it was someone like we had no idea about at the start. And of course, it made for that insane reveal, which of course ended up being Deathstorm. We had a lot of mystery being established over here. Of course, first things first, what's up with this? Black fire, what even is it? And then later on, we of course go into why is he killing these different people and its connection with Caitlyn. All of that, in my opinion, was really, really well handled. It felt very mysterious. We had Barry doing CSI stuff in this graphic novel, so that was something which really stood out in this portion of the season. Now, in terms of like the graphic novel itself, this graphic novel felt slower compared to previous two graphic novels. Like we had a couple of unnecessary episodes, such as like that Frost one where we had Caitlin's mother appearing as well. That episode just did not have to happen. It, it didn't need to be there, but it had the fair balance. Like we had three episodes with the Blackfire being the Blackfire. We of course got to maintain this mystery. And then we of course slowly find out that it's connected to Caitlin in some way. And we have like the incorporation of Ronnie Raymond into all of this. And of course we have the Blackfire eventually becoming Deathstorm. And that was for like a good two episodes, I believe. Now I will say that this graphic novel had this very interesting way to bring other characters back. Like, of course we were wondering how Ronnie Raymond would come back. And then of course we get thrown off at the start where we actually think that the Black Flame is actually Ronnie Raymond but then of course eventually we find out that it's not this is actually just Deathstorm messing with Caitlyn and it was something I really liked I love the reveal where Ronnie just turns around and then he just reveals himself as Deathstorm to Caitlyn it was such an insane reveal and of course everyone was freaking out over here because damn first of all seeing Deathstorm on the flash was really insane and of course second of all his CGI was really, really damn good. He was a very threatening villain to such an extent where, of course, as the Black Fire and then, of course, as Deathstorm as well, Barry can't do anything. He's so powerful that Barry cannot even touch him. Like, the only one that could really do anything is Frost, and that's because she's a cryokinetic and their powers are linked. But Barry couldn't do anything, and that, of course, raised the stakes and made him a much more powerful villain. And of course, we had Deathstorm harming lots of people as well, once again, making him a threatening villain. One thing I will say that is that I did not like how this storyline was mainly written around Frost, which it, like, it felt like a Frost graphic novel, which I know is what they purposefully went for, but I wish it was more so centered around the Flash. But I get that like what they wrote Barry couldn't really do anything, which is why Frost had to take like the spotlight. But I do wish they kind of like tweaked things up a bit to make it so like Barry at, at least did a couple of stuff to Deathstorm. Now we got to see some really cool power traits showcased by Barry. Like one thing that really stood out was him riding the lightning. That was something everybody loved seeing. We of course got to see Eddie Thon back as well, once again as Deathstorm. And then like he shows up to Iris. All of that was really, really cool. Now, this graphic novel tonally was much darker compared to the previous one, which is Armageddon, and of course, compared to It's All Negative as well. So this really dark tone genuinely felt like a season two to three type graphic novel or just story arc, and that was something I really loved. 
especially like due to the fact that the Flash has been very light-hearted most of the time and just getting this darker storyline just you know made something feel different so that was something which really stood out as well. Now one thing which makes me most happy about this graphic novel is that I loved how they got Caitlyn involved. Like she hasn't had a storyline since season 5 and this one really stood out. Her of course like being Deathstorm's bride because of that connection with Ronnie Raymond and then we end up getting conflicted between who will die, is it Frost or Caitlyn? And of course we do end up seeing Frost die and like just having Caitlyn go through this whole big trauma like having hoped that Ronnie is alive only to find out that it's not Ronnie it's just Deathstorm and then having her sister die this was such a great storyline for Caitlyn so this was something I really loved in terms of Frost's death it needed to happen like I was never a fan of splitting Frost and Caitlyn and it did create a bunch of issues especially when we got to season 7 and of course a lot of season 8 as well so it needed to happen and she did have this really, really insane final battle between Deathstorm and, of course, herself. And it was something that was really cool to watch because it was different. Because this time, rather than the Flash actually doing something, this was all Frost. And we got to see her, like, fly around, shoot fireballs at each other. It was so cool. And the CGI for that final battle was really cool as well. Of course, in terms of Frost's death, it was an emotional send-off. And then in terms of like other storylines we had, we of course had Iris's time sickness getting more and more intense. We have her going to Coast City, seeing Tinya Wazo, and then of course we find out that her time sickness is getting more and more intense. She ends up making Tinya's mother disappear, and then she's facing these consequences of her time sickness getting worse. Like Dion, for example, he ends up getting weaker because of Iris's time sickness which is contaminating the still force itself and all of that was really really interesting and of course the mystery behind the time sickness itself was also something which really kept you intrigued but other than that Iris did have this really really great arc in this graphic novel as well where of course we got to see her doing more of that reporting now something which was very different in terms of like the graphic novel approach was in this season we had a third graphic novel and that is It's All Negative and this was the shortest graphic novel of all the ones we've had I believe and in this graphic novel we pretty much wrapped up the character of the Reverse Flash. Now in this graphic novel Tom Cavanaugh was the highlight of this graphic novel by far. He was insanely acted. He had this really cool arc in prison and of course becoming the host of the Negative Speed Force and eventually having this insane battle with the Flash. I really loved what they did with Tom Cavanaugh in this graphic novel. We of course had this new speedster mystery towards the start where of course Barry goes to Ivo Labs and he finds out that someone's already been there and then we have this like scientist going around saying, oh Flash, you're back again, you saved all of us and Barry's confused. We have him investigating, going around, checking what's going on and he fears that there might be another speedster around. Of course, we have some really cool Flash and Thawne interactions over here as well. And then we got introduced to a brand new speedster on the show, Mina Dawan. Now, Mina Dawan's introduction was really nice. I really loved her character in this arc. We find out that she is not a natural speedster. She's been given artificial speed. And that was, of course, through the help of her boyfriend, Eobard Thon. And I really loved the way they got Matt Letcher's Eobard Thon involved. It's still kind of confusing in regards to how exactly he was there because they only had a working theory that... This was the Thawne from Legends of Tomorrow and of course Flashpoint, but then the time rates just gave him another chance. It's still confusing and because it's just because it's a theory, they never properly confirmed what it was and like how Matt Letcher's Eobarthon was still here. But nonetheless, it was great seeing Matt Letcher back because we haven't seen him on The Flash since season 3 and he played this like newer version of Eobarthon, more humane and just a genuine good person he of course played Mina Dawan's love interest and I really loved what they did with like Mina Dawan's character and like bringing Matt Letcher's involvement we had some really cool flashbacks between them and of course we find out 
how they created the lightning oscillation chamber, which is what gives Mina her negative speed for speed. Now, of course, over here, we get to see this like, like massive contrast between Matt Letcher's Don and Welzabard. Welzabard is selfish. He's a very selfish person. He would do whatever he wants to just achieve his goals, whether that be to get speed or just make sure the Flash is dead. Like, what we got to see with Matt Letcher's, like, it's totally different. Like, over here, and yes, he is a newer version of Thon without his memories, but, like, we got to see him be more humane, where Mina was dying and he gave up his biggest dream, which is to become a speedster, to keep Mina alive, and that was something I really liked. He, of course, did have this conflict with Barry, and, of course, Barry eventually realizes that this Thon is not the Thon that he knows. This Thon's actually genuinely a good person. They, of course, worked together because the negative speed force was slowly corrupting Mina, so they were trying to find a way to essentially get Mina out of it, and, of course, power of love kicks in once again. But we then got the involvement of the negative forces, where we, of course, found out that they were trying to overshadow the positive forces and in order to like fully do that, they needed Eobardthon to fulfill his destiny, which is to become the host of the negative speed force. And for that to happen, the Matt Letcher version of Eobardthon needed to die. And I really loved seeing Barry team up with Mina and of course speedster Matt Letcherthon as well and having them face off against the negative forces. It was something that was really, really cool and we got this really insane ending where, of course, we got to see Iris's death, which was just crazy. And we had that scene where Welzabard rips Matt Letcher's face and we had that like recreation of the Flash Rebirth cover. And it was something that was really, really cool. And of course, Eobard Thon rises up as the proper main villain, essentially, of this graphic novel as he becomes the reverse Flash in the Flash once again. I did really like what they gave Caitlyn's character, not only in this storyline because she didn't really have much in this storyline, but she did have something in episode 16 which was a really pivotal moment for her, where of course her and Chilblain were working together to bring Frost back and of course Barry eventually finds out and destroys her whole lab. She's somewhat frustrated about this, but then of course Chilblain mentions that he's found another way where which they could actually bring Frost back and then Caitlyn works with Chillblain once again and eventually we get this really cool cliffhanger with Frost or Caitlyn this season where she of course goes inside the cryo chamber and she comes out as a whole other person which of course we're all assuming to be Killer Frost so that's a really cool storyline we had with Caitlyn. Now one thing I really loved seeing in this graphic novel was I really loved seeing the Flash family teaming up together again. It's always a highlight whenever we have Bart, Nora and Barry just sharing the screen together and just interacting and we got to have it for this graphic novel as well. We of course had Mina and Jay Garrick in the finale which was something which was really cool as well. Now Grant Gustin's acting as well as Tom Cavanaugh's acting, especially when we got to like the finale and just overall in general, they really shined in this graphic novel and it has got to be one of my most favorite parts of this graphic novel. We of course had like force flash versus negative reverse flash and that final battle with them using a variety of like the forces and their abilities. It was just really, really cool. It's one of the best speedster fights we've had on the show and it was just a really cool send-off for the reverse flash in my opinion. Now what I did not like with this graphic novel is that I did not like what they did with a lot of the characters especially with Cecile. I hated how her power just leveled up. It was so unnecessary and I do not like the idea of her going out there in the field especially as an unexperienced character. Like, I've said this before, I do not mind if Allegra is out there. Yes, she does not have enough experience, but at least she's been out there before. So it wouldn't really be too bizarre to have her out there. But having Cecile being there in the field makes absolutely no sense. And I really, really disliked what they did with her powers leveling up. I did not like, like the idea of Team Flash B, where, of course, we had Allegra, Chester, and Cecile teaming up. 
and like the Allegra stuff in her episode was not good at all. It was mainly carried by The Flash and Eobard Thun. And of course, we had the Cecile top and the Queen stuff, which again, I found awful. We had a very disappointing and overhyped cameo, which of course ended up being Damien Dark, where of course Daniel Nicolet said that we were supposed to be getting this insane cameo that no one will see coming for the finale and ended up being Damien Dark, which don't get me wrong, was really cool, but it was very disappointing. And then of course with the forces, we had some very cheesy and cringy moments at times and it ended up having a lot of over-the-top acting, in my opinion. But lastly, in terms of this review, I will go over the interludes, and all I want to say is that it's just much better compared to Season 7. Like, this time, the interludes were actually tied somewhat with the upcoming graphic novels, like we had Episode 15 with Into the Still Force being tied to the final graphic novel, and... I really liked that. I really liked how it was connected. And although it's filler, it's still connected to what's to come. And that was something I really loved. We, of course, had Barry being involved very significantly a lot. And that, of course, helped not only making the episode better, but actually making us care about it. And something that was so different this time with the interludes was that we had a lot of speedster elements and like time travel involved, which works. It works. Like, if you're going to have a filler episode and, like, not include Barry, have something speedster related and it's going to work. And that was something which really shined with episode six, where we had not only time travel, we had season one nostalgia, we had Eddie Thon coming back, and we had Bart and Nora pretty much being the speedsters of that episode. And it was something that worked and eventually of course with episode 15 we had Barry being there we had a lot of speedster elements because we had Nora and Barry over there and then using their speed us like exploring this new force Barry seeing the future with the still force all of that was just really really cool and then of course with episode 16 we had a lot of Barry because it was a very Barry centric episode and it felt like a season one episode and all of that just highlighted how much more successful this set of interludes were compared to The Flash Season 7. But yeah guys, overall, as I said, although we've had some flaws this season, The Flash Season 8 has been a massive step up compared to The Flash Season 7. As I said, it is hands down my third favorite season of the show by far. And yes, I do stand by calling this season the redemption season. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. If you guys have enjoyed the video, please give a like and subscribe. Be sure to tell me in the comment section down below if you guys enjoyed The Fly Season 8 in general. I'm interested to see all of your thoughts towards all of this as well. And yeah, I will see you guys in my next video.